This tutorial is about how to set up climbing behavior in your game using the PaperZD plugin. Now this one won't be dealing with just the animations. This will also be dealing with the controls and the behavior within your character blueprint for handling everything to do with climbing. So this one is going to be a bit more expanded in its scope but still we'll be dealing with how to implement this using PaperZD animations. So if we run our game here, just to get a look at the behavior, we can walk past the ladder, climb up on the ladder, dismount from the ladder, and we can jump up on the ladder. We can fall, oops, fall down onto the ladder. and have the animation, the climbing animation pause while we're on the ladder. So that's all the things that we're going to accomplish. So first thing, we need to have the controls for this. So you add an axis mapping for move up using the S and W keys, setting the scale to negative one for the down movement. We need to create our ladder. We do that, uh, I put them here under tiles. I just brought in a picture of a ladder, converted that into a sprite, and then used that sprite in a blueprint, a paper sprite actor blueprint, and simply added a collision box. Get a look at here from another angle, so that we can detect when the character is overlapping with the ladder. And in the ladder's properties, we added a tag, ladder. Okay, so then in our character, this is everything you need to uh, enact the climbing behavior on your character blueprint. So first off, we have the detection of the ladder itself. So when the capsule component overlaps or ends overlap, we check, does it have the tag ladder? If so, set, we're on the ladder. And when we leave, we set we're not on the ladder and also just to be safe, not climbing and setting the movement mode back to walking. The reason for this extra bit here is sometimes when dismounting the ladder for whatever reason, if, if this isn't included here, I tried uh, locating this in other areas of the code and I just didn't have the luck of it reliably dismounting. So by adding this here or doing this here rather than trying to do it in your movement component or uh, somewhere else in your animations, I found it most reliable to place it here. You uh, may find a, a better place to put it in your code, but for me it worked uh, quite well here. So when we use the up-down uh, axis movement. We check to see, because this is a continuous input axis, it's always firing. We need to make sure the value isn't zero because this will be firing even if you're not touching any of the controls. So if it's not zero, meaning a control is actually being touched and we're on a ladder or we're falling and on a ladder, in either case, set we are climbing, set the movement mode to flying so that we're no longer affected by gravity, and then add our input in the Z axis with our axis value being piped in. Now, if you want to adjust your climbing speed, so say your climbing speed is slower than your normal walking speed or running speed, you can simply change this value here to say like 0.5, it'd be half as fast if you wanted to do it that way. And then finally, in our animation blueprint, we of course have our getting our reference to our owner, because we're going to be able to reference the owner. And then we have our normal uh, jumping and falling animations, which we've covered in previous videos. We have our normal idle walk run node, which has been covered in a previous video. So the only thing we've added in is this climb node, in the, the climb node, we are simply checking our 
velocity, if we are moving either up and down or left or right, then we set the play rate for our climbing animation to one, normal speed. Otherwise, we set the animation, the play rate to zero, so the animation pauses, so that it stops animating if you're not moving on the ladder. And then our transition rules for going into or out of climb from the walk run, simply are we climbing, which is being set in, in our character. Oops, misclick there. And then if we are not climbing, we transition back. If we're falling, then we're simply checking for, are we on a ladder? And if we're on a ladder, we transition to climbing rather than back to our walk run. Now, as pointed out in a previous video, when you have a situation where you have two different rules, transition rules, exiting out from a node, sometimes both of those rules can be true, so you want to set a priority. So here, we, the priority is set to zero, and here the priority is set to one. So in the event that you stop falling and you're on a ladder, it will go to climb rather than going back to idle walk run. Now as a bonus, something else that uh, I found out, a commenter told me about this, these map range nodes here eliminated all of the math that I did calculating my stamina for determining my play rate for my idle animation for the heavy breathing. So rather than that long string of math nodes, you can simply collapse all that down to this, where it maps a range of values to another range of values. So you have your minimum value and your maximum value, your current value, and then it takes, say for example, your, your input values are between 10 and 50, and you want to map it between 0 and 1. So 10 becomes 0, and 50 becomes 1, and it maps the values along that graph. So all of that math got condensed down into these nodes. So just as a, as a little bonus, one of my commenters pointed this out to me. It uh, simplifies things for you. Uh, but other than that, the walk-run node is exactly the same as it was before. And so from these, we have our ladder, and our ladder has a collision box on it. We detect if we are in contact with the ladder. We have our movement up and down on the ladder that only goes into effect if we're on a ladder. And then in our animations, we have our flow from our walking and running into and out of climb and from jumping and falling either into our walk or into our climb, which can then transition back into our walk. And because we have previously set up jump to airborne anytime we are falling, if we, if we move off the ladder, while not near the ground, it transitions back into our falling animation because of the jump that we had previously set up with our jumping behaviors. So I think that covers everything. Everything you need to know in order to get your climbing behavior to work. I have seen other methods that are used, for example, with the being able to climb, if the, the platform goes straight across rather than just off to the sides, so the platform goes all the way across and you're able to walk through it. I didn't bother implementing that because frankly, I was just lazy. I didn't bother. But there is a method that you can do where you can set up a plane in the texture or the, the, the platform and a plane is like half dimensional. 
So it, it has collision on one side, but not on the other side. So you can walk up through it, but then you can't walk back down through it. And then there was some ideas of turning collision channels on or off in order to go back through the platform and things like that. I just found it a headache and didn't want to bother with it. So my solution was just have my platforms to the side of the ladder rather than going through it. So if you want to play around with that, uh, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. I've given you a couple of hints based on things that I've seen, but just wasn't stuff that I was interested in. Uh, but for your other climbing behaviors, as you can see, it's all in here. You can climb up and down, side to side, fall off the ladder, remount the ladder, jump onto the ladder, everything you need to do. Uh, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. Just that and that and your ladder, and that's it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Have a good one.